in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Victory is ours through Him who loved us. Hallelujah. Let us worship and praise Him. Hallelujah. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You who by night stand in the house of our God, lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone for the sake of your son christ our lord forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Psalms set for this evening are Psalms 108 and 109. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul, awake, lute and harp, for I will awaken the morning. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing your praise among the nations. For the greatness of your mercy reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth, that those whom you love may be delivered. O save us by your right hand, and answer me. God has said in his holy place, I will exalt and divide Shechem, I will parcel out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet, and Judah my rod of command. Moab is my washbowl, over Edom will I cast my shoe. Against Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the fortified city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? You go not out without armies. Give us your help against the enemy, for vain is the help of others. By the power of our God, we shall do valiantly, for it is he that will tread down our enemies. O God of my praise, do not be silent, for evil and deceitful mouths are opened against me. They speak of me with lying tongues. They surround me with words of hatred. 
they fight against me without cause. In return for my friendship, they oppose me, and that for no fault of mine. They repay me evil for good, and hatred for my affection. Act for me, O Lord my God, for your name's sake, and deliver me as your steadfast love is good. For I am poor and needy, and my heart rides within me. I fade like a lengthening shadow. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting. My flesh grows lean and shrunken. I have become the scorn of my enemies, and when they see me, they toss their heads in derision. Help me, O Lord my God, and save me for your mercy's sake, that all may know it was your hand that you, O Lord, have done it. Though they curse, yet give me your blessing, and those that come against me will be put to shame, and your servant shall rejoice. Let those that oppose me be covered with disgrace. Let them wear their shame as a garment. And I will give the Lord great thanks with my mouth and praise him in the midst of a multitude. For the Lord will stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that would condemn him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8, reading from verse 16 to 25. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the lights. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Therefore, Consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken away from him. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. He replied, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging water. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked the disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Here ends the lesson. What an 
incredible encounter these disciples had seeing and being there to experience Jesus calming the storm. It's such an absolute privilege to experience the power of Jesus over nature. And what could have been a very grave situation turned out to one where they stood in amazement at the power of Jesus. Jesus invites them to cross the lake. And suddenly there was this huge gust of wind and the boat was swamped and filling with water. And I'm sure this happened very unexpectedly because no one would get into a boat knowing and seeing that there are dangers awaiting and that there's a storm brewing. That would be very foolish. And so it was natural for the disciples to be fearful when the sudden storm erupted. And while all of this was happening, Jesus remains asleep. And then they go to wake him up. Interestingly, with a statement, Master, we are going to drown. There's no request for help, no request for for him to calm the storm or anything like that but a simple statement we are going to town that was it for them they couldn't see a way out and so they were resigned to drowning because there was no expectation that this situation could be turned around and then Jesus wakes up and he calms the storm and they stand in absolute amazement at what he did. Who is this? Even the waves and the wind obey him. Obey him. They saw Jesus in a new light. They had a new perception of him. They had a new appreciation for him. And this is one of the miracles that they experienced there were a few after this, but this one was the start of the miracles that led Peter to confess and say later, you are the Christ of God. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior. And so in life, on reflection, the storms in life also come when we least expect it. And we float along nicely in life. And then suddenly there's a disruption. Storms of life are unavoidable. Even with Jesus in the boat, the storm still came. But it offered an opportunity for the disciples to experience the power of Jesus. And so for us too, storms are unavoidable. And sometimes it seems like Jesus is asleep or passive, removed or unresponsive. And we too become fearful and want to give up. But this miracle offers a reminder to keep the faith, the firm belief that Jesus has the power and is able to calm the storm. But for that... For us to have that faith and to have that belief, it is imperative that we nurture the faith, that we remind ourselves of the greatness of God, that we remind ourselves of the power of God that made the resurrection possible. Jesus is able to calm our storms. And when the storm is calmed, when we experience storms and we look back, then we are also amazed, knowing that we could never survive on our own steam and in our own power. Storms are never nice. They are threatening. They are interrupting. They evoke fear. But storms offer us an opportunity to get to know Jesus better, 
to deepen our faith, to deepen our strength for life, so that we too may be like Peter, who say, truly, you are the Christ. So let us have just a few moments of reflection on life, giving thanks to God for saving us in our own storms and offering to God the storms that we are facing now. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our forebears to Abram and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world, I believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem humankind. I believe and trust in His Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of Port Sudan in the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. And we pray for the Bishop, the Right Reverend Abdul al Nur Cody. We pray for all parishes, all people, all clergy, all those who live and work and find their being in that area. Pray for the Diocese of George, the Reverend Edward Edwin Popas, the Bishop elect of George. We pray for him as he prepares to take up his Episcopal ministry. In our own diocese, we pray for the Archdeaconry of Grotesky. We pray for Venerable Donovan Meyer, the Archdeacon. We pray for all parishes falling within the archdeaconry, for the clergy, 
parish people and leadership. We also pray for Dean Michael and his family, that God will sustain them during this time of grief for the loss of a beloved mother and grandmother, friend and family to many. We pray for the funeral taking place tomorrow and that God will comfort them during this time. In our year's mind today, we remember Neville Mason and Mari Whitesley. We pray for their loved ones, those who are mindful of them on this day, those who love them in this world and look forward to be reunited with them in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priest be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. I pray the colleagues for today. Eternal God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life for all creation. Grant us grace to walk in his way, rejoice in his truth, and share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So as we are reminded today of the unavoidable storms of life and the unexpected storms of life, we pray the collect for peace, followed by the evening collect. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.